Welcome aboard, language enthusiasts! In today's video, we're diving deep into the world of idioms and exploring five Titanic-inspired idioms that have become a part of our everyday vocabulary. Make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video, where we'll put your idiom knowledge to the test with some fun exercises. So, without further ado, let's start our journey. Number one, go down with the ship. In Titanic, in the moments of disaster when the ship started to sink, a lot of people, including the captain, the cruise designer, and other crew members like the music band, stayed on the board of the sinking ship instead of trying to save themselves and escape. So, to go down with the ship means to stay loyal, even in the face of failure or defeat. For example, Despite the company's financial struggles, Jane decided to go down with the ship, hoping that things would get better in the future. So, did she quit her job, even though the company had problems? No, she didn't quit and she stayed. In the idiom to go down with the ship, we have the verb go, and this is the verb that you can change into any tense that you want. She went down with the ship, or I will never go down with the ship. All right, now let's try to say the phrase. Let's try to pronounce it. So, go and down, try to connect them together. Go down, go down. With, with, the ship, the ship. So, the ship, you can also connect together. The ship, the ship. Go down with a ship. Go down with a ship. Now, pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Idiom number two, steer or course. So steer a course means to take a series of actions carefully and intentionally to direct a path towards a specific goal or destination. Initially, the Titanic's crew was steering a course towards the Atlantic Ocean to get to the United States of America. When the unfortunate disaster happened, the captain and the crew had to steer a course through the catastrophe to make sure to save as many lives as possible. While this idiom is generally used in a positive or neutral meaning, sometimes it can be associated with a negative outcome. For example, by continuing to make poor decisions and ignoring the warning signs, the greedy CEO steered a course for disaster and led the company to bankruptcy. The idiom steer a course is often followed by prepositions that indicate a direction or purpose of the course. So, these are some most common prepositions that are used with this idiom. Through, for example, he steered a course through the narrow channel. To, she steered a course to the nearest port. Toward, they steered a course toward the open sea. And for, he steered a course for success in his career. Okay, and now let's say this phrase together. Steer, 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 steer course. So this sounds like a one long word, steer a course. Now pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Idiom number three, a titanic effort. The creation of the Titanic was a remarkably ambitious idea that demanded immense effort, strength and dedication from so many people. Although the ship's tragic fate gives the phrase a negative meaning when specifically referring to the Titanic, the phrase Titanic effort is generally used in a positive or neutral context to describe very impressive effort, a lot, a lot of effort. For example, the team made a titanic effort to complete the project with a tight deadline and had a great success. Let's take a look at some common verbs that we can use with the phrase titanic effort. So, these are the verbs. Make. She made a titanic effort to finish the marathon, despite feeling exhausted and in pain. Require. The success of the project will require a titanic effort from everyone involved, but it will be worth it in the end. Put in. He put in a titanic effort to turn the failing business around, working long hours and making tough decisions to bring it back to profitability. Okay, now let's say this phrase together. Let's start with the word effort. Effort. 
So here, the letter O makes the sound a uh, fert, effort, a Titanic, a Titanic. So connect, Titanic effort, a Titanic effort, a Titanic effort. Now pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Idiom number four: a sinking feeling. The idiom "a sinking feeling" refers to a sudden and intense feeling of worry, disappointment, and hopelessness when a situation or event is starting to go very wrong. In the case of Titanic, the passengers and the crew likely experienced a sinking feeling when they realized that the ship was in serious trouble and that it would sink. Now let's take a look at another example. As the interview progressed and she realized she wasn't very well prepared, Cassie got a sinking feeling that she wouldn't get her dream job. So at that moment, she started to feel worried and disappointed and just hopeless. There are two verbs that are usually used with this phrase. Get, for example, I just got a sinking feeling that I forgot something important before leaving the house, or have. I've had a sinking feeling about this project from the start. I'm not sure we're going to meet our deadline. Please be careful that sinking in this phrase is an adjective, not a verb in the gerund form. So you cannot say I'm sinking a feeling, but you can say I'm having a sinking feeling. Feeling. Make sure to prolong the sound e. Feeling. A sinking. A sinking, a sinking feeling, a sinking feeling. Now pause the video and practice saying the phrase. And the last one, idiom number five, hit an iceberg. Now for the Titanic, this phrase is not an idiom, but it's rather literal. An iceberg was a very unexpected challenge for the ship. So the idiom hit an iceberg means to face an unexpected problem or an obstacle. For example, after months of planning their dream vacation, the couple hit an iceberg when they found out that the destination was hit by a major storm and all the flights were cancelled. And in this phrase, "hit" is the verb that you can change into any tense that you need. For example, our company has hit an iceberg with a new project, and we need to reevaluate our strategy. When the pandemic hit. Many couples hit an iceberg and broke up. The economy has hit an iceberg in recent months, and many businesses are struggling to survive. Okay, now hit and connect together. Hitten, hitten, iceberg, iceberg, hitten iceberg. Everything sounds like one long word. Hitten iceberg. Hit an iceberg. Now pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Okay, and now it is time for you to do some exercises and check how well you understood the material. Let's start. Number one, which of these idioms means to face unexpected problems? A. Hit an iceberg. B. Steer course. C. Go down with a ship. Or D, a sinking feeling. Number two, look at these pictures and choose the one that best illustrates the idiom "a sinking feeling." Question number three: Which idiom can be used with the verb to get? A. An iceberg. B. A sinking feeling. C. A Titanic effort. Or D. Down with a ship. Number four. Complete the following sentences by filling in the blanks with the correct idiom from the list. A. Despite their, the team was ultimately defeated in the championship game. 
B. When the company went bankrupt, many of its employees chose to and stay until the very end. C. As the storm approached, the captain knew he needed to to avoid any danger. D. When the business partnership the team had to organize an urgent meeting to discuss the new course of actions. And E. She had a when she realized she had left her passport at home right before the flight. And last question, number five. Which sentence is grammatically correct? A. The company's CEO knew that the new product launch would be a titanic effort for the marketing team. B. As soon as I heard the news, I had a sinking feeling in my stomach and knew that something bad had hit an iceberg. C. When the ship began to sink, many passengers refused to go down with the ship and instead tried to save themselves. And D. The new manager's aggressive tactics are causing the team to experience a sinking ship. Okay, and that is it for today's short journey. Let us know in the comments down below which idiom you like the best and which ones you are likely to use in the future. Write down some examples and we'll be glad to check them out and give you feedback. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to never miss a fun and quick English lesson with PDQ English.